And now, forecast first on Ozarks Fox News. Well, today was a gloomy day. We had lots of cloud coverage out there. Thankfully, most of them are going to make their way out of the area overnight tonight. Lows this morning were in the upper 40s to middle 40s, and they did not really go anywhere throughout the day. Our highs today only in the 50s and 40s. Rolla didn't even get out of the 40s today, high of 52. Here in Springfield, here's what we're looking at. Clouds move out overnight. A great and fall-like weekend ahead. Breezy conditions on Sunday. And I have a Halloween sneak peek in my seven day details coming up in just a few minutes. Ozarks Fox at nine starts now. Real new now. This is Ozarks Fox News at nine. Good evening and thanks for staying up late with us after the World Series. I'm John Adams and I'm Jennifer Abreu and these stories are real new now. An arrest is made after more than a dozen bombs were mailed to prominent Democrats around the U.S. Today, this chilling warning from the FBI director. Today's arrest doesn't mean we're all out of the woods. There may be other packages in transit now. He's arrested this man, Cesar Sayak, in Florida. Sayak has an extensive criminal history. Today, the president praised the efforts of law enforcement. Talk show host Megan Kelly is out. NBC canceled her show after Kelly made offensive comments this week about blackface and Halloween costumes. Kelly apologized on the air the next day. Back home here in Missouri, the attorney general's office files charges against a sheriff's deputy. Deputy Matthew Hutchins worked at the Gasconade County Department. Prosecutors say Hutchings is charged with two counts of sodomy and one count of sexual abuse. They say while on duty in March, Hutchings sexually assaulted a woman in her home. The two had previously met online. Hutchings has since resigned. The attorney general's office is prosecuting the case at the request of the Gasconade County prosecuting attorney because of a conflict. President Trump today is saying he was impressed uh, about how quickly the FBI tracked down the man they think is responsible for sending those explosive devices. As Fox's Matt Napolitano reports, he's got a long history with law enforcement. Caesar Sayoc has a lengthy criminal history. The 54-year-old's address is listed in Aventura, Florida, but he originally grew up in New York. Records revealing an extensive criminal past, dozens of incidents ranging from traffic violations to making a bomb threat in 2002. He was a registered Republican and drove this van plastered with bumper stickers, mostly political themed, one supporting President Donald Trump, another bashing CNN. Federal agents took that to their South Florida headquarters. What's unclear is what he did for work or if he had experience working with explosives, though experts say those package bombs he allegedly used indicate that's probably not the case. It does look like it is low impact because you can, you can only get so much explosive in a letter or a package. Experts say criminals often leave behind evidence like fingerprints or DNA. Based on their initial analysis, they uncovered a latent fingerprint from one of the envelopes containing an IED that had been sent to Congresswoman Maxine Waters. He has been charged today with five federal crimes. For these charges, the defendant faces up to 58 years in prison. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. Sayoc sent packages to over a dozen high-profile Democrats and the news network CNN. It's a nationwide problem. More and more teens are vaping. And today, staff members at Ozark High School learned about the dangers of vaping in a session led by Cox Health. The session was designed to provide the high school staff with information on the health consequences of vaping and give them the necessary tools to help students make wiser choices. The youth have been uh, surveyed like they are every year. They take 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. Uh, they surveyed 49,000 of them. 63% of the youth that vape don't think there's nicotine in e-cigarettes or Juul. Two years ago, we had seven students um, who committed tobacco violations. Um, last year, we had about uh, 67. And this year, we're already up to 47, and we're only a fourth of the way through the school year. According to the CDC, nicotine can harm the brain, which keeps developing until about age 25. Tomorrow is your chance to safely dispose of expired or unused medication. 
Drug take back takes place between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at six pharmacies here in Springfield. This is a free service and you can bring any medication besides sharp needles or syringes, inhalers or glass containers. The goal of the take back is to provide a safe way for community members to dispose of unused medication. If they're at home, they can take like a, let's say Clorox, a bleach bottle, and they can put the tablets in there, add coffee grounds, water, and it'll start disintegrating, and they can put that bleach bottle in their trash pickup. So they don't enter our you know, water streams or whatnot. If you do uh, dispose of them by the, the sink or, or by flushing them, and also likewise, as mentioned, you don't want those to wind up in the wrong hands and somebody gets gets a hold of it that has that really doesn't need it and it does the wrong things with those items. For a full list of the pharmacies here in Springfield that offer take back services, visit our website at ozarksfirst.com. A dairy farmer in Seymour is upset after someone shot one of his cows between the eyes. Curtis Throne says it happened on Monday at his farm. The cow is still alive and the farmer doesn't know who did it. He says he and other small dairy farm owners in the Ozarks are already dealing with plenty, and this is just one more worry to add to his plate. Throne says it's hard to find companies that will take their milk, but they're glad they didn't lose their cow. The bullet right now is most likely lodged in a sinus cavity, and she's had some wheezing and some bloody noses, but if it would have been two inches higher, she would have been definitely dead, but we got lucky. The Webster County Sheriff tells Ozarks Fox that no evidence was found at the scene and no arrests have been made so far. Mm, tough story there. Well, people in Springfield are wearing black stickers under their eyes today to raise awareness for domestic violence. This is all part of Harmony House's Eye Care program. Other nonprofits in the area are also doing their part, holding fundraising events to benefit Harmony House. AIDS Project of the Ozarks has held three such fundraising events so far this month. Part of the whole point of wearing this, like I'll wear this when I go to dinner with my friend tonight. I want people to ask me. Um, Lynn is so yes, cool. people have been asking and we let them know what it's all about. That's the whole purpose is for people to ask and wonder, hey, what's going on here? Domestic violence is something that affects people of all backgrounds. To register to participate as an individual or business, we have a link on our website, ozarksfirst.com. Well, hundreds of people are expected to celebrate breast cancer survivors tomorrow at Hammonds Field. And two local women are being honored for overcoming their battle with cancer, and they have two very different stories. Because of my family history of breast cancer, I was, I was always self-checking. I went to my primary care physician for my yearly blood work, and she noticed a symptom that I had not noticed. Edith Van Hosen said she knew breast cancer was a risk for her, while Rhonda Berlou did not have a family history of the deadly disease. Both women say it's important to tell their stories so others battling breast cancer know what to expect and that they're not alone. There's so many things you don't know, and when somebody can step up and say, let me tell you how this is going to go, it really makes a difference. There's hope, and keep keep yourself informed and make sure that you take care of yourself mentally and physically because the mental part is a, is a big thing with all cancers. Edith and Rhonda will be at tomorrow's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk at Hammonds Field. If you want to go, it begins at 9 a.m. Registration begins at 8. Well, Beth joins us now for those planning to attend that event tomorrow morning. What kind of weather should they prepare for? Well, it'll be a chilly start, but good news is these clouds behind me, they're going to make their way out of here. We're going to see lots of sunshine the rest of the day. Details coming up right after the break.